Hey guys, welcome back to Flatpak FX, the place where I teach you all the tips and techniques for creating your very own animations and video effects. Now in this video, we're gonna be taking a look at how to create this Star Wars hologram effect. Hello, Commander. Things are going as planned. Please proceed with the operation. Now I make weekly tips and tricks videos just like this one. So if you're new here, maybe consider subscribing so you don't miss out. So with that, let's jump over to After Effects and get started. Now a big shout out goes to Premier Gal, who was kind enough to act as our hologram commander in our Star Wars fan film and also for this tutorial. Now if you're interested in learning more about video production, I highly recommend checking out her channel. She has many tutorials on Premiere, tech reviews and other Adobe products and I've linked to her YouTube channel in the description below. Now I've also supplied a few files and you can download those via a link below. Once you've downloaded those, just bring those straight into After Effects. Then we're going to grab our blank video here and then just right click and create a new comp from selection. Then you can import your own green screen clip and just drag that straight on top. The next part is we just need to position this so it sits roughly where you want it to be over the hologram device. Then we're going to take that clip, we're going to come up to layer and down to pre-compose. Now you can call this whatever you like and then just hit OK. Then we're going to double click to open that composition. Now the main things to note when actually filming your own clip is to make sure that the green screen covers the entire part you want to keep and that you've also got your camera attached to a tripod and it's not moving. Now this is not going to be a tutorial on how to do a green screen key. Now if you need help with that, I've linked to a video that I've made in the description below and that'll give you some tips and tricks on actually how to do that. Now once you've removed your green screen, we're going to come up here to the rectangle tool with that layer selected and we're just going to draw a mask which sort of cuts off half the body here. Then I'm going to come down to the mask feather and just feather this. I'm also just going to reduce this mask so that we get a gradual fade that looks like this. The next part is we're going to grab all of these pre-rendered glitch effects and just drag them all on top of this layer. Now I've already made these up for you to save a lot of time. And once you've imported those, what we're going to do is select them all and then we're going to scale them down so they cover up our green screen shot. Now I'm just going to turn off two and three here and drag number one on top of my clip. Then I want to come over to the mode for my glitches one layer. Now if your mode is not there, just right click, go to columns and make sure modes is selected. And I want to change this to be hard light. And then I'm going to click this little button here, which is to preserve the transparency in the background. Then I'm going to turn on my glitches three layer, which is my next layer. I'm just gonna reposition this slightly. And I want to come all the way down to the bottom here where it says Silhouette Alpha. You can't see it on my screen, but just select Silhouette Alpha. So we should have something that's looking like this at the moment. Then I'm just going to right click and create a new adjustment layer. Now we want to add a few effects to this adjustment layer and I'm going to come over to my effects and preset, which is here on the right. Now, if yours is not there, just come up to window and make sure effects and presets is selected. And the effect we want to add is called the displacement map. So I'm just going to drag that onto that adjustment layer. And I want to come over here under my effects controls and change this to be the glitches too. So it's using this layer here as our map. And basically all I want to do is just scale this up to about 20 on the horizontal axes. Now all that's doing is actually using this layer as a map, it's distorting that layer underneath. So it creates these interesting lines running up and down. The next part is we want to come back to our effects and presets, search for the turbulent displace and add that underneath. Now what we actually want to do is change the displacement to be horizontal displacement. And then we need to scale this right down so I'm going to change this to be 40 and the size, I'm going to drag all the way down to three. Now, if I zoom in here and actually turn off the transparency, you can see it's adding this slight distortion effect around the edges. You can also drag this up if you want more or less of that effect, but I find around 40 looks pretty good. So now we're ready to actually add the color of our hologram. So we're going to come over here and search for the tint effect and we're just going to drag that underneath. Now the exact colors we need are actually these colors here. You wanna map your black to this dark blue. Now you can enter in this number here if you want to get the exact color. And for the white, we want to go for a light tone blue, and you can enter in this number if you want to get that exact color as well. 
but any sort of light blue or dark blue will work fine for this. Now I also just want to add a little bit of contrast. So I'm going to add the brightness and contrast underneath that and I want to drag this up to about 40. So this is what we should have at the moment. So now we're done with that, we're going to come back to our blank video here and this is what it's starting to look like. Now at the moment, it doesn't look very good at all because it doesn't have any glow effects added to it. It just kind of looks like we've just stuck this straight on top of our video. So we want to add a few glow effects here. So the first thing is I want to take that holder layer and I want to change the mode to be add. Then we're going to come back up to our effects and presets and I simply want to add a curves to that layer. And all we're going to do is just drag down on the shadows and bring up the highlights. So just creating a simple S curve. Now all we're trying to do with this layer here is just isolate those highlighted parts. So the parts that are lighter, we want to really emphasize those and get rid of the parts that are darker. We're then gonna take that layer, we're gonna come up to edit and just simply duplicate it. And we're simply just going to remove that curves. Now with this second layer selected, we want to come back over to our effects and presets and search for the glow and add that to that layer. And what we're actually going to do is create a bit of a glow effect running around the outside. So with that glow layer selected, we want to drop the threshold right down. And what that's actually going to do is start to isolate a lot of that highlight. So somewhere around 15% works good for me, but yours will obviously be different because you're using a different clip. So just judge it so it looks about right to match what I'm doing. We then want to expand that radius right up. So for me, I'm gonna push mine up to about 80 and that's gonna create a bit of a halo effect running around the outside. Now, the other thing is we want to change this to be on top and that's going to preserve that detail that we've got underneath there. And then you can change this glow operation just to be none. Now, if I play through this, this is what it should be looking like. Now, one last effect that I like to add to this is if I take that same layer again and I come up and duplicate, I'm going to remove that glow setting and I want to come back over to my effects and presets and search for the CC radial blur. And I'm going to add that on top along with some brightness and contrast. Now the CC radial blur, what we actually need to do is change this to be a fading zoom. And we want to grab this little center piece here and just drag this down to the bottom of the screen. And what actually happens is as we start to drag this down into the negative, so somewhere about there, if I just solo that layer, you can see it's, it's kind of stretching our image to create this sort of projection effect behind our layer. So it makes it look like it's being projected out of that device. Now you can further emphasize this by going to the brightness and contrast and just dragging up. If you wanna emphasize that even further, you can just duplicate that a few times and you can see it kind of adds this nice effect, which makes it appear to be projecting out of the device. I find that's just a nice little effect to add as a final touch. Now at the moment, our hologram is not actually stuck to our hologram device. So we need to motion track this hologram device so that our hologram stays in line with the device as it's moving around. So the way we actually do this is we select that background layer and we're going to come over to the tracker. Now, if your tracker's not there, come up to window and make sure tracker is selected. And all we simply need to do is just click track motion. It's gonna pop up with this little tracker. And if I scale up this middle box here, I can position this and choose a point that we can roughly track on the device as it's moving. I need to make sure my playhead is back at the start here and we only want to track the position. And then I'm going to hit the play button to start that. Now we need to apply this data to something. So we're going to right click and just create a new null object. And with that background layer selected, we're going to click edit target and we're going to select that null layer and then hit okay and then we want to apply and then hit OK again. Now we can grab all of those layers of our hologram. We can position them exactly where we want them to be and then just use the parent pick whip and just drag that onto that null. So now when we play through, you can see that our hologram is now stuck and tracked to our holographic device. So there you go guys, that's how you recreate the Star Wars hologram effect. If you like this video, you can give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down. You can also check out more great After Effects tutorials over at flatpackeffects.com. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.